You've seen that throughout the season. Really great young goaltender coming up in the PHF, and I think absolutely it's going to be a, a good goaltending match. We do have some keys to the game, but as always in the PHF, you have to include the goaltending in what needs to happen for any given team on any given as we net. took that to break just because that was some good hockey and gerard trying to beat brenneman and does an opening goal for connecticut haven't played in a month and they have their first lead this evening it's one nothing is amazing gerard gets the scoring open we've seen a pretty strong four check from both teams Getting a little physical behind the goal. That was Marchman, wouldn't you know it? Sets Gerard up. And Brenneman once again, just not able to complete. Temoskevich coming in, turning and throwing this in front. Brenneman dives to that go in. It looks like it did. Connecticut scores. It's 2-0 <laughs> Whale. Josh, what are we even watching right now? How great of a teammate she is, but my goodness, look at Samo getting it done. A fight in right there in front of Brenneman and a yawning net as she gets pulled one way. And oh my goodness. She was below the goal line. We talked about gritty, dirty goals. I don't know if it gets any filthier than that. The Connecticut Whale struggled. One of their strong suits was the penalty kill. Cross ice feed, and there's a shorthanded goal. Marchman led the break, and it was Ali Monroe to finish it off. It's Connecticut three and Minnesota nothing. My goodness, was just about to make the point or was making the point that the Connecticut Whale have been known for their penalty kill. But this season, they've taken that to the next level, not just packing it in and absorbing and taking or uh, making block shots in bunches, but it goes back to what we talked about. Morrison skates in, right off the pass. Oh, how about that? You spoke it into existence. Minnesota scores, it's 3-1. Talked about gritty goals. That's the name of the game all day today. Morrison gets a shot on net. Makes Abby Ives work. The Whitecaps bring numbers and they find the back of the net. Shut out no more. We'll see who gets credit for that goal, whether it was Morrison. Mack was also shortened due to different responsibilities. Oh, that's a great kick save by Brenneman. Somehow keeps it out. And then Marchment fires wide. What a save. Oh, my. This will be a penalty. There's another look at the save. Taylor Turnquist, high sticking is the penalty here. Couldn't close the gap quick enough. And it's Connecticut to bring it back into the zone. Racing forward, right in front of Blessy, and score! There's Kennedy Marchman again! Connecticut, a 4-1 lead, picking up right where they left off a month ago. At this play, end to end, because my goodness, this Connecticut team is just on another level. Of course, this is the end result. They get another goal. But even the opportunity that they had before at first I was questioning the, the decision making. They have caught part of the iron there. Another chance going to the back post. And that's turned in a power play goal from Minnesota. It's Lexi Lang who gets the goal. Well, you've I spoken mean... two goals into existence. I mean, it's just those dirty, gritty goals talking about wanting to see Minnesota get a little bit more coordinated on their passes. Lexi knows what's good. She knows her teammate found her right there. I love that. I love it when they're just, just giving each other love, getting another goal. In the final few seconds, well, Connecticut, they haven't played in a month. They haven't won or lost in a month, but they've won eight straight coming into this one, and they've now won nine straight the longest win streak in team history moves on and they win this one four to two.